welcome back to Nurse Catherine here and welcome to my first Thursday scheduled video. I am now doing NCLEX review questions every single Thursday. So I am now vamping it up, posting three videos a week. Tuesdays are more so educational, always geared towards nursing. Thursdays are now NCLEX related and Saturdays are always vlog styled kind of videos, lifestyle, travel vlogging, stuff like that. So welcome to my first Thursday NCLEX video. In today's video, I am going to be reviewing three NCLEX questions with you all and they will have a different subject each week. Now I am using an NCLEX related book for this and we are going to go through questions of the book and some weeks I might even make my own questions up. The great thing about following a book, which I'm following the MedSearch success book, is that it's giving you rationales and the ones that I make up I will also give you rationales but there also are test taking hints in this book. So I will let you all know if I am using questions from the book or if it's ones that I have made up on my own because I don't want any copyright issues here. I know NCLEX has changed a little bit since 2016 when I took my NCLEX but the questions never really change that much. The percentage, the weight difference of the questions might change a little bit, but NCLEX questions are always asked in the exact same way. So without further ado, let's get started. Today's topic is strokes, also known as a cerebrovascular accident. I am going to read the question and you will also be seeing it on the screen and I will also be posting every single answer for each question as well and then you can gradually pick which ones you want and we will go through every answer and why it is not the right answer and why it is the correct answer. All right, question number one. A 78 year old client is admitted to the emergency department with numbness and weakness of the left arm and slurred speech. Which nursing intervention is priority? Answer one, prepare to administer recombinant tissue plasma antigen activator RT Dash PA. Answer two, discuss the precipitating factors that cause the symptoms. Question three, schedule for a stat computed tomography CT scan of the head. Or answer four, notify the speech pathologist for an emergency consult. When looking at this question, you have to start thinking like a nurse. So what is priority in this situation? You have a possible stroke patient who just came in. Am I worried about a speech therapist seeing this person? Yes, I am worried about that, but I am not worried about that right now. So we can automatically cross number four off. Number one, I'm thinking, okay, is this a medication for a stroke? And maybe you don't know if it's a medication for the stroke. So when you don't know a medication, you think, okay, is this priority? Is giving this medication priority in this situation? Now think back to your strokes. You know there are two different kinds of strokes. One could be a bleed and one could be a blockage. Some medications you can give for bleeds, some medications you can give for blockages. Now in this situation, we don't even know if this person has had a stroke. We do think they've had one, but we don't know what type of stroke. So we don't want to give them any kind of medications until we figure out which type of stroke this is. And let's go to answer number two. Discuss the precipitating factors. Yes, that is also important, but you need to do an action right away. You will be discussing, but discussing won't get you too, too far in this situation because this is a life-threatening situation. So if you have not narrowed it down, the answer is number three, and here is why. A CAT scan will determine if the client is having a stroke or has a brain tumor or another neurological disorder. If a CVA is diagnosed a stroke, the CAT scan can determine if it is hemorrhagic or ischemic accident and guide the treatment. Exactly what I was saying for why we knocked out answer number one, because we don't know which type of stroke this is. So you need a STAT CAT scan to determine is this Bell's palsy? Is this a stroke? There's a lot of things that will be going on in your mind. So let's figure out what the problem is first. Now the test taking hint for this question says when priority is used in the stem 
All answer options may be appropriate for the client's situation, but only one option is priority. The client must have a documented diagnosis before treatment is started. Okay, let's go on to question number two. This also is out of the MedSurge success book by Catherine Cadenhead Colgrove and Ray Hargrove Huddle. So question number two. The client diagnosed with a right-sided cerebrovascular accident is admitted to the rehabilitation unit. Which interventions should be included in the nursing care plan? Select all that apply. Answer one. Position the client to prevent shoulder adduction. Number two, turn and reposition the client every shift. Number three, encourage the client to move the affected side. Number four, perform quadricep exercises three times a day. And number five, instruct the client to hold the fingers in a fist. So let's start fanning out some of these answers. Normally you should be at least be able to get one or two answers knocked out of the way for a select all that apply question. You also cannot say there is more than one correct answer for every select all that apply question because that is not always true and it is not always true that they can't all be correct. So try to get that thinking out of your mind and just go with your gut and go with what you know. So let's start with one and go down to number five. Number one, position the client to prevent shoulder adduction. Well, you wouldn't want the shoulder, remember adduction is adding to your body, abduction is pushing away. So you would not want the client to have their shoulder pushing in on their body as you wouldn't do that to anybody. So that potentially could be a correct answer. Number two, Turn and position the client every shift. Well, if you have been through a med surge class, you would know that you are not positioning clients every shift. You are positioning clients every one to two hours. So that one we can knock off right away because you will get bed sores on your patient if you're only turning and propping them every shift. Number three, encourage the client to move the affected side. So this patient is in a rehab area and that's what they are supposed to be doing. So that potentially also could be a correct answer. Number four, perform quadricep exercises three times a day. When looking at that, okay, three times a day maybe seems like not enough in a rehab setting, but maybe could be a right answer, so let's come back to that one. And number five, instruct the client to hold fingers in a fist. Well, when we're doing a fist and you're in a rehab, you don't want your client to, or your patient, to hold their hands in a fist or else it could potentially get stuck there. You want them exercising that hand. So that would not be a correct answer. So one was correct that we decided, three was correct, and now four we're a little iffy on. I personally would not pick that one because three times a day just does not seem like enough exercise for a patient in a rehab setting. So now let's read the rationales of these answers. Number one, placing a small pillow under the shoulder will prevent the shoulder from adducting towards the chest and developing a contracture. Remember, just like that fist, that can start to contract and move in, just like the shoulder, and I'm sure you've seen patients who are now like this and they're stuck like that because they did not have the rehab that they needed. Number two, we talked about and we know that patients should be repositioned every two hours. Number three, the client should not ignore the paralyzed side and the nurse must encourage the client to move it as much as possible. A written schedule may assist the client in exercising. So great, we got that one correct as well. Number four, the one maybe that some of you were iffy on. The ex these exercises are recommended, but they must be done at least five times a day for 10 minutes to help strengthen the muscles for walking. There you go. So not three times a day, it's actually five times a day. And number five we knew was wrong, but it says the fingers are positioned so that they are barely flexed to help prevent contracture of the hand. And now let's go over our test taking hint for this question. Be sure to look at the intervals of time for any intervention. Note that every shift and three times a day 
are not appropriate time intervals for this client. Because this is a select all that apply question, the test taker must read each answer option and decide if it is correct. One will not eliminate the other. Okay, lastly, our third question on strokes. Here we go. The question. A client diagnosed with a subarachnoid hemorrhage has undergone a craniotomy for repair of a ruptured aneurysm. Which intervention will the intensive care nurse implement? And some of you might be freaking out at this point because you're like, I only have four hours in the ICU. How am I supposed to know this? Take a deep breath and work your way through each answer. So here we go. Number one says, administer a stool softener BID. You must know what BID stands for. That is two times a day. If you do not know your abbreviations, I do suggest going back and studying your abbreviations. Number two, encourage the client to cough hourly. Number three, monitor neurological status every shift. And four, maintain the dopamine drip to keep the blood pressure at 160 over 90. Some of you might be like, I've never seen a dopamine drip, but that's when you look at the number in this situation. So let's start at the very top. So administer a stool softener BID. Okay, a stool softener two times a day for a client who is bed bound, that makes sense. That might not be the most correct answer though, so let's move on. Number two, encourage the client to cough hourly. Now for a normal patient, you might encourage coughing, but more so you encourage the incentive spirometer. I've never actually encouraged a patient to cough, just use incentive spirometer. But you're also looking at this, the person had a craniotomy. So think about the head, okay? Think about an aneurysm. An aneurysm is an outpouching that has ruptured. That is a ruptured aneurysm. Now, if you encourage coughing, that puts a bit more pressure on that area that was just fixed. So that doesn't quite seem like the right answer. Number three, monitor the neurological status every shift. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if you've been in clinical, you know you're doing more than one neuro check a shift. You're at least doing it every eight hours or every four hours, sometimes every hour or two hours. Every patient's a little bit different. An ICU patient requires more care. That's why they are in the ICU. So one neuro assessment every shift does not seem correct. And number four, maintain the dopamine drip to keep a blood pressure at 160 over 90. Now there is a reason that aneurysm ruptured, right? Probably because of a high blood pressure. Now I know the question doesn't say that, but I'm trying to get you guys to understand this. When you have a blood pressure of 160 over 90, that's high. That is not a good blood pressure. That is a high blood pressure, especially for somebody who just had a ruptured aneurysm. So that also doesn't quite seem like the appropriate answer. So number one seems like the most appropriate answer. Not that that's the first thing on your mind is a stool softener, but also think about a stool softener. Hmm, what's it doing? Softening the stool. What will that help the patient not to do? That will help your patient not bear down when they are having a bowel movement. What happens when you bear down? You're putting pressure into your muscles, into your body and squeezing. We don't want this patient to do that because they just had a ruptured aneurysm and a craniotomy and we don't want any more tension on that body. Just like we don't want any more tension from the high blood pressure. So number one, you have to think your way through it and talk your way through it. Okay, that makes sense. And back to our rationale, it states, the client is at risk for increased intracranial pressure whenever performing the Valsalva maneuver, which will occur when straining during defecation. Therefore, stool softeners would be appropriate. The coughing, they said, also increases intracranial pressure. Monitoring the neurological status is appropriate, but it should be done much more often than every shift. And the dopamine is used to increase blood pressure or to maintain renal perfusion. And a blood pressure of 160 over 90 is too high for this patient. 
So even if you don't know your medication, look at the next number. That's a high blood pressure for this patient. And test taking hint for this question is the test taker should always notice if the answer option has a time frame. Every shift, every four hours or daily, whether or not the time frame is correct may lead the test taker to the correct answer, which even if you didn't know about the dopamine, you knew that 160 over 90 is way too high of a blood pressure for a fresh post-op patient of this sort. And that is it for this first Thursday NCLEX review video. I hope you all enjoyed this. I know it was only three questions, but we really dug deep into each answer and to each question, and I hope that helps so much so make sure you stay tuned every single thursday i will do this exact same thing and we will go through this entire book if need be and you can have these nclex questions remember i am using this book here and sometimes i will do my own questions but if you want to get this book i will put a link down below to an amazon link and you can buy this book and this is literally what saved me in nursing school when I failed a semester of school and this book helped me so much to get through the rest of my nursing school so I really do recommend this book it is wonderful so if you guys want to get a med search book get this one it's wonderful all right that is it for today's video make sure you stay tuned for next Thursday's NCLEX video as well and have a wonderful day and I'll see you in Saturday's video